Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are getting creative with circle punches and I'm sharing 10 project ideas you can do with circle punches and each idea has a sub idea and a sub idea. So let's just say we have plenty of ideas in this video. I only own these two circle punches and this one doesn't even work. So if you don't have any circle punches, fret not my friend, because you can do all of this with no circle punches. <sighs> Let's begin. All right, first let's talk tools because you might not have a whole lot of different circle punches. And as a matter of fact, neither do I. But I do have this geometry compass and scissors. All right, so really there's no excuse. You can also use things like this, lids. Anything that's circle that you can trace around and cut it out by hand. I also have this old dinosaur. I don't even know if they make it anymore. It's called Shape Boss. And then you get all sorts of different stencils, I suppose, and you put your paper underneath and then cut out the shapes. So I do have this and I have been using this as well. But let's just say you have none of this stuff. You can just cut your circles out by hand. They won't be perfect, but there will be circles. So let's see, what can I do here? Not a perfect circle, but a circle nevertheless. So you can most definitely do all the projects I'm going to show you without owning any actual circle punches. All right, let's get started. Project number one is circle clusters. So you're just clustering a number of different circles and gluing them together. This can make a nice little book plate, for example. This journal is probably not big enough, but you get the point. Then there is something like this. Same kind of idea and something like this. So you can arrange your circles in any way that you want. Let's try one, shall we? I have some circles here left over from my project. So I'm just going to layer them. You can do, I mean, you can see what I've done here. So I want to do perhaps something a little bit different. Maybe you can layer them going down like this. So you can really have a play with it and do anything really. You can glue stickers on them, you can paint them, color them, add washi tape onto them, ink the edges. And there we have it, a little circle cluster little circle bubbles think of a bubble bath and all these bubbles popping everywhere you're just gluing bubbles together and you can make tiny little embellishments and you can make large embellishments you can have a full cover of circles how cool would that be just to fill up a whole journal cover with circles they are really easy to make and quick and you can have a whole lot of fun with them i really love this idea Idea number two is to use little circles and stamp letters to make a unique title. If you don't have stamps, you can use alphabet stickers or you can simply write a letter in each circle. So this here, I'm gonna make into a little something. It's like a little journal cover. And you can see very simple what I did here. A heart, I actually cut this heart out by hand. There's a little banner underneath here and four little circles and stamped love. These circles are an inch uh, in diameter, I think. These ones here are slightly smaller. So, you know, the bigger your word, the smaller circles you need. And this is really cool as a book plate. So you can see this. It looks really nice, very elegant, clean cut, to the point. I really love this look. And this is also a project where you can use all of your alphabet stickers. I actually made a video on what to do. Like, don't we all have this sort of stuff? You know, you have some leftovers and what are you going to do with them? I have a whole video on this. I'm going to link it down below. But this is also pretty cool to do in this project. You can also use things like this, rub-on letters. This would be cool to mix and match, right? I can do song, S-O-N-G, for example, I don't know, in little circles. For example, I might decide to do a music-themed journal. And I can use this for my cover. I can make a little cluster like this for the, you know, book plate. And then I can go ahead and have S-O-N-G. All sorts of things we can do. 
Idea number three is to highlight part of a stamped image by popping it up. So what you do, I'm going to do one on camera. You, they don't even have to be popping up. This is glued right down, whereas this one is popping up. I made a little card here, but I'll make this into a mini little journal. You can see over here, I uh, this isn't a stamp. This is a stencil that I used. And then you see, we are highlighting the middle of the stencil with a little circle or a big circle in that case or here for example this is a stamp stamped it onto this piece first then i stamped it onto a separate card cut out a circle and then popped it up so you can see underneath it's the same stamp so let's take this for example i've already previously done this so i might as well use this uh, this is just reusing some old greeting cards that I've tea dyed and I stamped this image twice and now I'm going to go ahead and make it into something I suppose another thing you can do which is what I've kind of done on this one here is stamp the image three times so first time you use the full image second time you stamp it on a different colored uh, cardstock and then the third time you stamp it on the same cardstock as the first one so you can see first layer second layer third layer so you can play around with that sort of stuff if you are inclined to do so and usually what i've done with these ones is i made the kind of the the main part of the image as the focal point but I'm thinking now in the video, maybe I can do something like this. Maybe I can do her face, the flowers, and the shoes. So I'm going to do three little circles. I just want to try it out and see how it's going to look. I like to ink the edges just to make them stand out. It makes it kind of, even if you don't kind of glue it down so that it pops up, with the inked edges, it looks as if it's popping off the page. You can see on these two, this one is popping off the page, this one isn't, but they kind of give the same feel, you see? They kind of look, they both kind of look, I don't know, do they? To me, they do. And you know what would be even better? If I had done this on a different colored cardstock, it would look even better. But anyway, this is what I'm doing now. So I feel like for this one, I want the circles to be popping up. So I'm using this foam tape. And then the secret is, of course, I'm sure you already know this, you don't need a video to tell you, but you have to align the little circle with the image. So there's the first one that looks kind of weird just on its own like that. And the second one and the third one. I'm not sure how I feel about this kind of thing. Perhaps it would have been better if they're not sticking up, but I don't know. I definitely like this better. It seems more natural looking, I suppose you can say. If I wasn't filming a video and I did this in my own free time, I suppose, what I would do is color the flowers, maybe color this, oh, maybe I would just color these three stickers and it would, uh, I mean, circles, and it would seem more, I keep thinking natural, I'm not trying to say natural, but just right. It just, there's something about it that's not quite right, but I think there are ways to do it might be better to play around with something that doesn't have a face, an image like this. Because even this one here, there's something about it that's not speaking to me. But these other examples, absolutely 100%, absolutely love how they look. So have a play and see what you can come up with. Idea number four is borders. So there's two different borders that you can see here using a circle punch. This is the negative of a circle punch so you're punching a, a wave border and then you can do all sorts of things with a glue on a page you know as a page edge embellishment or tuck spot or whatever and then over here you can see i was using actual circles you can use all the same size i did kind of an ununiform kind of a look with all different types of papers and different types of sizes, different sizes, I suppose. And I made that into a pocket that's gonna be bound into a journal. And there's gonna be a little something in the pocket. And I really love this look. So this is pretty self-explanatory where you have a little off-cut piece of pretty scrapbook paper or whatever. And then you're just creating a faux scalloped border. Just to demonstrate, this is what you do. That's all you do. Really simple. Or you can make it really, really simple. And just use the same size circles or make a uniform kind of a look. 
the possibilities are truly endless and for this kind of look over here it's pretty self-explanatory but i think you would need a smaller punch this is a one inch circle and you just kind of go along and you create that border i don't have a smaller circle punch well i do but it doesn't work and let me tell you before you start writing comments oh here we go sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't i've tried everything I've tried the aluminium foil. I've tried everything there is to try it. I just need to get a new one. End of story. But I think you will see now a smaller circle border. See how it's not working. I think a smaller circle border would look uh, better than this, but I also don't mind that. So obviously for this project, you do need a circle punch. It might be a little bit difficult to uh, get perfect cuts with just using your hand your scissors so anyway there's that one i like it but i absolutely love 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 this idea idea number five is a patent background i had a completely different idea for this one of what i'm going to do but this is what i got and i'm going to pop a photo in here to show you what it looked like before i started so this is all cereal box and I cut out circles out of a cereal box. Then I went ahead and painted this individually in black. And then I painted the circles individually as well. So uh, I have one left over here. I was playing around with, you know, my plan was to color the whole thing gold, but then it kind of started reminding me of the universe perhaps and the planets and stuff. And then I kind of did that. I don't know. I did I did a thing so and then I was thinking how am I going to embellish this stellar universe looking thing and I found this die cut that I have one minute to 12 you know and then over here the journey is the destination so it kind of makes sense like with the time flying and we're always in a rush and I'm getting all philosophical now but that's kind of where I was going with this you know the time we're rushing to get to that thing over there or to that thing over there where in fact it's the now it's the journey that's the destination i don't know is that cringe is it lame i'm not sure my original idea for this was to create something like this actually i'm going to use a file folder so you can see a little bit better i was planning to create a background and i was planning to glue down uniform pieces for example like this but i don't have enough to show you but this this wasn't the idea the idea was to use the same size circles and to glue them down on a page and then to paint over the whole thing all together and that's going to give me a creative and textured background that i can go ahead and do some art journaling on each circle can be a space for a poem a quote i don't know what whatever you know but in any case i hope that you see where i'm going with this you are basically creating a patterned background by lining up your punched out circles you don't even have to paint over them you can use your scrapbook papers and and do the same thing and have all different colors circles and you can cover them in for example lined paper graph paper book page music page you know and have this creative background if you have seen that video of the leftover alphabet stickers i did this in that video and this actually hangs on my wall so this was my inspiration for this project i was planning to just glue down a whole lot of circles and paint it and then i was gonna have one of the circles be the focal point i went ahead and, and and changed it up a bit and just followed what felt right and this is what i ended up with and this also reminds me of the doomsday clock which probably isn't all that happy and positive to be putting into this crafty video but i saw an article that the doomsday clock has been moved closer to 12 and it's closest to 12 12 representing the end of the world and we are at closest to 12 at this very time so that's what this reminded me of it's kind of got a negative connotation but i thought if you flip it around the journey is the destination it's a nice reminder to kind of just you know if that's where we're heading then this is where i want to be and enjoy the journey oh that's it for philosophical speaking today i promise I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm also not a medical professional or a scientist. So let's move on to some more crafting. 
All right, idea number six, very straightforward, is to use your circle punch to create a window. And really simple, but very effective. So you can see, I just used two pieces of paper and on one of them, I cut out a circle. That's all there is to it. On here, I cut out a circle, but I had to cut it out by hand and I didn't do a very good job. I kind of messed up a little bit. It's not a perfect circle, so then, take away from the non-perfect circle I glued another circle inside see this is a cereal box tea dyed cereal box just glued it and it makes well now you're probably staring at this now you can see it but it makes it less obvious when you don't have a perfect circle really simple concept and you can do so much stuff with this like you can take it to the next level and to the next level for example you can create an actual window you can lift this page up and have a little acetate or some sort of a plastic underneath that circle to make it an actual window and then you have a little something popping from inside and i think a butterfly is always the way to go because it's really eye catchy isn't it a butterfly right there in the middle so again we're just using the negative so you're cutting out a circle out of a page there's the little window and then you pop it on top of another page just like that and you put a little something in there and there you have it I mean, I'm not going to win any awards for this idea. I know that much. It's not groundbreaking, but it's very effective and I hope inspiring to you. Next idea, idea number six, is to layer the circles and then, of course, to go ahead and add other elements to it, such as doilies, brads, big doilies, little doilies. This is all ink dyed. I have a video on using inks. This is turmeric. This is coffee. And I can't remember what this is, but it might be avocado. And, you know, you're creating these beautiful embellishments. And the first thing that comes to mind, and I didn't actually manage to do it in advance, so I'm going to do it now, is to create something like this. This was done in a video called Pleated Paper Flowers. I'm going to link it up here and down below. Very popular video. And imagine a meadow of flowers like this. But instead of pleating the flowers using strips of leftover scrapbook paper, you can simply layer circles to create flowers. I'm sure you've seen this idea before. Again, another non-groundbreaking idea. Nevertheless, it is so extremely easy and fun to do, especially if you have round doilies, but let's pretend you don't. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna use any fancy stuff. I'm just gonna use tea dyed cardstock, okay? Ink some edges, and I'm only gonna work with what I have here. This is a little something. Uh, this is a die cut from a pack, and it's just been sitting here for, I keep wanting to use it, but it's just not being used. I'm feeling like a book page kind of look. So here we go. I'm just layering four circles. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to hold them all together with a bread. If you don't have breads, then you can just glue them together. I have some fancy breads. This is pretty cool. I'm hoarding it, totally hoarding it. Uh, I might use, I'm just going to go ahead and use that one. Why not? What do we think of that? Maybe gold would look better. Yes. I like the gold better. All right, I know you didn't need a tutorial for this, but I just wanted to, really wanted to make a little flower, only it's turning out to be this massive thing. But my plan was to use, probably this isn't the right thing, but to put them on little stems like this, just like that, and make a little meadow of circle flowers. I think that looks cool. It would be better if they were little, but you get the idea. And I think these could be used as little tuck spots, as uh, part of a closure on a journal. You might have something like this and then you use your closure around. It can be lifted up a little. I don't know. Just an idea. All sorts of different fun stuff we can do with a very simple layering process. This one here looks like a sunflower. I think that's my favorite one. We are moving right along to idea number eight, which is circle charms. Here are my elaborate notes. You punch a circle, you add an eyelet or not, you add a die cut or a sticker, and you add a bob pin, and you have a circle charm. Really, really quick, simple little idea. 
and really effective and you can hang it off a closure on a journal for example or on your packages of things that you sell things like that you know you can do all sorts of stuff with this one of the examples of what you can do with this is maybe something like this again really really simple so we are just adding to the charm and i have a little bit of ribbon here a little bit of black lace and you can go ahead and just keep adding things tags broken pieces of jewelry beads all different types of laces perhaps some buttons you can see on these here i have some buttons on there that looks quite effective this was done before the circle so really you can hang you can do anything you can hang anything on a bulb pin and make it look really really nice speaking of buttons and by the way i made them all double-sided so they're fun on both sides so speaking of buttons that brings me to idea number nine which is circle button charms exactly the same concept but instead of die cuts and stickers and stuff like that you're gluing buttons onto your punched out circles and i used glue gun to glue the buttons this one here is actually a shank button it's actually this one here and all I did is remove the shank and that's easy to do if the shank is plastic there we go and then I use that to glue it. it I get a flat back and then I glue it down and that button in particular looks really effective for this layering business I mean how easy is it to make this you don't even have to do the eyelets you can just punch a hole and off you go beautiful little embellishment and last but not least, idea number 10, I ran out of names, so I'm calling it circle embellishments. And basically, I'm using a little bit of wire, pretty much doing the layering thing, and then adding some beads. This one is very boho-ish looking, isn't it? So this isn't my idea. Actually, I was sent these little embellishments in Happy Mail, and it gave me an idea to do in this project. The only thing that I did differently is that I have the beads kind of sitting down the ends. These ones don't have the, the beads are up the top here. So that's one way of doing it. These ones here will glue down with hot glue gun and they have the foam tape underneath. So they're kind of sticking up. My one first, I sewn the button onto a little circle and then threaded the wire through and then put the beads on. So I think I might do one quickly uh, just to show you how it's done. So I'm going to use the circles that I already have left over. Maybe I can use this button. It was on my desk, but it's kind of not showing. So let's see. All right, let's see. How does this look if I pop that on top of that? And then I pop the button on top of that. All right, I lost a little bit of footage here. So I'm just going to redo this little step that I lost. So the first thing I need to do is grab some wire. This is cheap wire. I've had it for years, never knew what to use it for. Now I know. And I'm going to thread a little bit of it through the button and just go around it twice. Chop off the excess. Now we need to attach the button to our first circle. You can glue it on or you can sew it on. I'm going to sew it on because sometimes when you use hot glue, the hot glue can seep through the button holes. I'm not a huge fan of that look. I mean, it's no big deal, but I just prefer not to have it. So all I'm going to do here is center the button and poke the holes just like that. Made a faux little button there. Next thing, you guessed it, thread my needle. Now I'm going to go through here and the button and then through the button and through the hole again i might go around it twice i know you know how to sew on a button but i'm showing it anyway all right tie a knot at the back chop off all the excess and we have button attached to the first circle and now we're going to glue this circle onto the next circle glue applied all over and off we go and now we go back to the original footage and now i'm gonna glue this onto that there we have it next thing i'm gonna do is add some beads just keeping it really simple i'm just gonna go ahead pop some beads on all right so i've got some beads on there and now to make the beads kind of stop falling off i'm going to grab the last bead wrap the wire around it it's very fiddly to show but and now i'm gonna go back through the bead and tighten i hope you can see that maybe you can do it one more time just to be on the safe side 
and that's it and now I don't like this extra wire here so I just cut that off and there it is and now repeat on the other side now I'm thinking I have this little charm in here I just saw that now so maybe I can add a little charm too let's see how am I gonna add this charm pop it through maybe wrap it around a couple of times and then I'm gonna go through the bead and maybe again through the bead and chop the wire off and there we have it what do we think I actually do like it I think I would have preferred the little charm to be on this side and this to be on that side but that's just being a perfectionist now and perhaps I would have preferred to be the beads to be lower not on the circles but lower down here but it is done and it is the way it is and I do like it I have to say so to recap we have number one circle clusters number two we have stamp or use alphabet stickers number three we have highlight a stamped image or a focal point number four we have borders for scalloped border and a wave border number five we have a patterned background number six we have groundbreaking create a window number seven we have layered circles number eight we have circle charms number nine we have circle button charms and number 10 we have circle wire embellishments <sighs> i can't even fit them all on screen i love them i don't know which one is my favorite i love them all i actually love them all usually i have a favorite usually i will gravitate towards one thing in particular and i will say yes that's my favorite in this case i love all of these maybe not this one actually that one's not my favorite but that idea i really like so it's just the actual project didn't turn out the way that i had it visioned in my head but i love the other options of the same idea in any case i hope you feel inspired i feel inspired i felt inspired doing the project and let me tell you there's millions of other things that you can do with circle punches and circle shapes these are only 10 ideas and there's a little extra idea or two or three within each idea so you can only imagine the things i mean this video didn't even scratch the surface of the amount of fun you can have creating with circles bubbles everywhere i just love it i hope you do too please let me know what you think do you feel inspired are you gonna go and bust out some circle punches and you know i forgot to mention and so i'm gonna mention it now remember the craze of the coloring books the craze is probably still happening i'm not sure but anyway you could find coloring books all over the place for really really cheap and then you start coloring and then uh, you do it for a couple of hours and you kind of give up because you realize it takes too much time and the book is this thick so now we're stuck with all of these coloring book pages and I find that the beautiful thing about them is that you can tea dye them, makes them look so much better. And look how fabulous they look when they're cut into shapes. In this case, they're cut into circles. You can do all sorts of shapes, rectangles, triangles, squares, whatever. You can make whimsical houses. Um, I have a video on that uh, using these. How cool. I didn't get a chance to use them in this project. Actually, I did. I did make one thing with this, but... Go and get your coloring books and tea dye those pages and get creative. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.